today, the religion that is crypto. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, of course, the question on many people's lips is, is this a critical turning point for crypto? Because we had a 31% plunge yesterday morning and then a 33% surge in the afternoon. That's the US time. Such was the wild ride Bitcoin took. And it lopped off millions, of course, in fact, billions in value before some of the more prominent proponents of crypto, and particularly Bitcoin, helped propel it to a torrid rebound. In fact, Bitcoin plunged towards 30,000 US dollars before the selling stopped. The extreme price swings in an asset known for its turbulence cause outages on major crypto exchanges and dominated the chatter on Wall Street. The tumult elicited a tweet from Elon Musk that implied Tesla wasn't among the sellers, while Kathy Wood said her monitors flashed a capitulation that put the digital token on sale. And then Justin Sun a tech entrepreneur who founded the cryptocurrency platform Tron tweeted that he bought $152 million worth in Bitcoin for around $37,000 a coin. And it went down to a worth in a whisker of $30,000 just after 9am in New York. And then it moved slowly up and briefly topped $40,000. And even now, it's still wobbling around the 40,000 mark. And Ether, the second biggest coin, sank more than 40% before cutting that in half. But here's the thing. I've concluded more and more as I've been watching these cryptocurrencies, and I recognise that cryptocurrencies are not all the same. But let's pick on Bitcoin just as an example. The people who believe in Bitcoin believe in it because they believe in it. It is fundamentally a religion, a religion based on the view that one day this will become the future currency of choice and its intrinsic value will then be very high. However, sceptics, and I'm a little bit more sceptical than some, would say, well, there is no fundamental value attached to Bitcoin at all. It is purely market sentiment driven. It's the pure and perfect supply and demand. And if enough people believe it's going to go high, it'll go higher. But the reverse is also true. If people think it's going to fall and they decide to capitulate, then it will fall further. Now, what I find very interesting is that the cry from the Bitcoin and crypto brigade during previous bursts of volatility was YOLO, or you only live once. That's an easy thrill-seeking motto to utter when prices decline by the odd 10%. It becomes harder to cling to when prices are down, say, 30% in a day and 50% in a month, and there's panic in the air. For true crypto believers, every decline is a buying opportunity, and indeed, there was a late rally to limit losses, as I discussed. For the rest of us, though, the hallmarks of a speculative excess have been present for a while. A trivial but telling example is the posters one can still see in London and in other major UK cities that read, if you're seeing Bitcoin on the underground side of a bus, a billboard, it's time to buy. No, it's time to think the party's over, perhaps, and the smart money is heading home. The party poopers turned out to be Elon Musk and the People's Bank of China, which may seem an unlikely combination, as I discussed yesterday. The former said in February he'd take payment for Teslas in bitcoins and then changed his mind last week and worried correctly about the hideous carbon footprint left by miners of the cryptocurrency and the excuse that they're using sun power 
doesn't really hold water, I'm afraid. The latter on Wednesday told banks and other financial institutions not to accept digital coins, saying they are not real currency. Really, though, the prod could have come from anywhere. The challenge in viewing a cryptocurrency as an asset or a hedge against inflation is that there's no internal income or rate of return to use as a valuation yardstick. That is also true of gold, the crypto crew's preferred comparator. That's why, of course, you see those gold Bitcoin coins. They want to give the impression that it's the same as gold. But gold, of course, has been prized as a store of value for a few thousand years, which is a critical difference. In the longevity stakes, strings of computer code are barely out of the blocks. And those aren't blockchains I'm talking about there. Meanwhile, Bitcoin's usefulness as a currency evaporates if the price can yo-yo wildly within a single day. And in the background, of course, there's the worry that central banks simply won't allow their monetary systems to be usurped by freewheeling anonymous payment systems, a point China would seem to have confirmed. Even if the underlying blockchain technology is brilliant, and it is, regulations matter. It is conceivable, of course, that this week's drama could be followed by a recovery next week. It would be silly to make hard predictions. Musk, perhaps regretting his previous role as cheerleader, was doing his bit for Bitcoin by tweeting about Tesla's diamond hands, meaning the company won't be selling its stash. That's easy for him to say. Tesla's one billion odd of Bitcoins represents about 5% of the company's treasury holdings. For those whose speculative positions are more stretched, the psychology will surely change. Fear of missing out will still be a theme, but the fear of being badly burned will become more intense. So to that extent, Wednesday does feel like a turning point. And crypto assets shouldn't be seen as a real investment at all because their underlying value is hard to discern and market participants should brace for more price swings, according to the European Central Bank Vice President Louis de Goudis. When you have difficulties to find out what are the real fundamentals of an investment, then what you're doing is not a real investment, he said in a Bloomberg TV interview on Wednesday. This is an asset with very weak fundamentals, and that is going to be subject to a lot of volatility. The value of Bitcoin and other tokens plummet as we discussed, driven in part by criticism from Tesla and greater questions about regulatory scrutiny. Some traders may have also been taking profits after the run-up to nearly 65,000 US in April. The ECB had earlier said in its financial stability review that the risks posed by Bitcoin to the wider system appears to be limited, even as the surge in prices eclipsed previous financial bubbles like the tulip mania and the South Sea bubble in the 1600s and the 1700s. But Mike Novogratz, a major cryptocurrency investor, told CNBC on Wednesday that the breakdown in Bitcoin won't be fixed quickly. The Galaxy Digital founder said on the Squawk Box that Bitcoin's morning plunge feels like capitulation. And he also called it a liquidation event as Bitcoin overnight fell below the $40,000 for the first time in 14 weeks and then, of course, dropped even further. That put it down more than 25% in the past 24 hours alone. And there's also a decline of more than 50% from last month's all-time high, near 65,000. Humpty Dumpty never gets put back together in two days when he cracks. It's going to take a while. The market will consolidate. It will find a bottom somewhere. I'm hoping it's close to here, he said, suggesting it could be around thirty-six dollars to $38,000. Bitcoin, of course, repaired some of the damage later on Wednesday, getting back up towards 40000 again. This story hasn't gone anywhere. This crypto revolution has happened, but these are certainly setbacks for the wallets and for the investor base. People lost a lot of money, so they'll dust themselves off, he said. One factor that had been thought to be fueling Bitcoin's surge to its April all-time high was institutional adoption, including companies buying the cryptocurrency as an investment 
and some financial firms taking steps to provide client exposure. But a recent note from JP Morgan said institutional investors have recently ditched Bitcoin in favour of gold. Asked about those findings from JP Morgan, Naravax remained optimistic on the long-term adoption picture. I see a movement. I was out with two bank CEOs in the last month and both of them were fascinated with decentralised finance. He added, I just see an exonerable move from financial institutions and tech companies into the crypto space. And he told CNBC on Tuesday that he felt Bitcoin was likely to consolidate into a trading range between $40,000 and $55,000. And while that lower bound has already been breached, the former hedge fund manager said he saw $40,000 as an attractive entry point for buyers. At Wednesday morning's low point, of course, Bitcoin was still up more than 215% in the last 12 months and around 6% higher year to date. But he said he believes several factors are behind Bitcoin's major backslide in recent weeks, including the comments from Elon Musk, who criticised the cryptocurrency's environmental impact while announcing the electric vehicle maker would stop accepting it as payments. A lot of more people own crypto. Crypto has seeped into pockets all over our society. And you had a confluence of events, a combination of tax day, Elon Musk tweet, whatnot where you started breaking down the positivity in the price action and now we've got a liquidation event, he said. And there you go, you see, it's back to the religion. If you believe in the crypto religion, you will still hold faith and you will say that things are just going through a bit of a bumpy time but there is fundamental value there and they will ultimately win out. But perhaps a more rational investor might ask more about, so where is that underlying value? What makes Bitcoin value at 40,000 compared with 30,000 or 65,000 US? The answer is, it's all smoke and mirrors because nobody knows. It's all a matter of people's confidence and people's belief. And that's my concern ultimately, because people are effectively buying and selling based on religious trust and faith and nothing else. And that may be a hard judgment, but it's one that I think is pretty close to the truth. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.